Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer Diamond, and I live a whole food, plant-exclusive, sofas-free, gluten-free lifestyle for health and well-being. And it is a special time for me. A year ago, I was on my way to True North Health Center, and I was going to do my very first water fast experience. I had no idea what, what, what would come of it, but I'll tell you, fast forward to being where I am today and changing my food and doing this water fast, it helped me heal. I'm still healing, but the quality of life that I have been able to gain back it's just, it's just a miracle, and I want to share it with you. Maybe you're curious and you've heard about True North. Let me share my experience. Um, it was wonderful. And a year ago, I had a privilege of being able to put together a presentation about my trip shortly after I had just gotten back. So I want to share that with you in celebration that whole food plant-based, and water fasting combined, for me, was the ultimate in healing. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Okay, so um, thank you for allowing me to share my experience at True North. Um, I'm just going to start by giving you a brief introduction about myself in case you don't know about me. My name is Jennifer Diamond. I turned 54 at the beginning of March. I live at home in Arizona with my husband and my dog, Remy. We have three adult children, one son-in-law, and four grandchildren. My mother and her husband also live here in Arizona. I have a lot of health conditions. Um, hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, which are both autoimmune disorders, allergies, um, osteoporosis, anemia, which comes and goes, sinus issues, lots of growths and tumors, including a cyst on my hand currently. But my most recent diagnosis and the most troublesome thing is small fiber neuropathy with no known cause or treatment. After 14 months of searching for answers, I was finally given that diagnosis of small fiber neuropathy. The Western medicine doctors told me there was no known cause, and without a cause, there's no treatment. They said it would get worse over time, that it would never go away, and that I could take brain-altering medications for life to help with my pain and discomfort. Well, that was unacceptable to me, and that's when I decided to look into a stay at True North Health Center. I had heard about True North through the work of Chef AJ and the growing whole food plant exclusive sofas free community about six years ago. Now it seemed I might need to explore True North firsthand. I reached out to Dr. Goldhammer through his website, filled out a form, and a few days later got a free consultation to see if I was eligible to stay at True North. He said, I'm eligible, but he couldn't guarantee it was gonna work to cure my small fiber neuropathy. But he approved me to go. He agreed it could help in other areas as well. And it, if it did rid me of the small fiber neuropathy, then of course it would look good for his research. I got in on a cancellation. It seemed easy and the right choice. The days leading up to going, I realized I wasn't excited. People were asking me if I was excited and they told me they were so excited for me. Why I wasn't excited? Because it was my plan B, my get out of jail free, something I always had in my back pocket and now I was gonna cash it in. What if it didn't work? Feelings leading up to travel, uh, I had a lot of fear of the unknown, being on my own, physically unable, lots of what ifs, including what if I just wanted to come home? So I packed several baked potatoes, sweet potatoes, a salad, some fruit, and I was on my way. When I landed in Santa Rosa, I was greeted by a gentleman who had also been a patient at True North. He's in the picture in the corner of your screen. A little backstory about him. His name is Jim Taylor. 
He has done a one day fast up to 40 day fast water fasting. And when he retired, he sold his house and he relocated five minutes from True North so that he could plan to be able to go there for every meal and enjoy any lectures or classes that they offered. He does transportation as a side gig. True North has a check-in process, including a three-day quarantine due to COVID. I was greeted by Gloria, seen here in the third picture, one of the medical assistants who took my vitals, my weight, and had me fill out forms. She then took me to Concierge, where I met Atia, seen in the fourth photo, who took my insurance card, my payment, and had me do more paperwork. She then gave me a tour of the grounds, let me get a salad from the salad bar as it was in between lunch and dinner time, showed me to my room, showed me my room, connected my television, and left me there. It was mostly raining. I met my sweet mate, Kirby, who was very warm and friendly. We both shared the same birthday month, which was fun. Outside of our rooms was where they had the drinking water station, a microwave, and a small refrigerator. My neuropathy heightened from the nervousness that day. During my stay, I journaled, and I'd like to share a few of those journal entries throughout this presentation. Starting with February 28th, 2023, what do I wanna do with this opportunity? I can cry, feel sorry for myself, and mourn my family being in other places without me. I can try to learn about myself by reflecting, focusing, listening, and being present. I can be social, meet people, listen and learn about what is offered here. I can practice meditation, breath work, relaxation, and self-love. My neuropathy sensation is in my left foot and leg. If it were gone, I wouldn't be here. Why did this happen? Will I ever accept it? I don't know. I can hear the clatter of dishes clinking against each other as the kitchen crew gets ready to serve breakfast to those who are eating. I woke hungry and I realized how much I look forward to eating here, wanting to smell, taste, and engage with others. That separation for me is part of my sadness. Or is it an excuse to be sad? I feel the swelling of tears trying to come out. So many things can be my excuse to cry. It's okay to cry. How many tears are enough? As I sit here next to the slightly opened window, looking out at the courtyard, as it continues to rain, I can feel the nerves in my right hand and left foot tingle and chat that they're still here, still angry with me, still trying to speak to me. A lot of people come to True North and start their water fast before they see their medical provider and get approval. My advice about why not to start your water fast before they approve you is, Number one, you'll wonder about the taste of the food the whole time you're water fasting. The second reason, sometimes things don't go according to plan. Your water fast can be delayed or changed to a juice or a broth. I saw my doctor. He called me when I was in my room and we spoke for about 40 minutes about my medications and all the other information. He then had me physically come to his office to finish the appointment with a physical exam and a medication transition plan. He said, I was gonna start with juice. I was crying and finally angry, not because I was offered this great opportunity, but because of why I was here. Being in isolation didn't help. Things just got real. I went outside in the morning while it briefly stopped raining and did some meditation. And when I returned to my room, I was greeted with my first juice. I will get four 12 ounce glasses per day delivered to my room. I received watermelon and celery juice at 8 a.m. 12 noon, I will get apple celery, 3 p.m. watermelon celery again, and at 5 p.m. apple celery with carrot. These will be my juices the entire time I'm on juice. I will also be drinking an additional four 12 ounce glasses of water. I received my medical sheet. I was told to stop all my vitamins, almost all my medicines, and cut my thyroid medication in half. I earned my green dot, which allows me to be out of quarantine. You're supposed to sip the juice slowly, make it last. I tried to sip it until I received the next one hours later. 
While carefully drinking my first juice, I reached for a pen and knocked it over, spilling it everywhere. Panicking, I ran into the kitchen and I burst into tears at Chef Bravo, telling him I spilled my juice. I know it was measured. I screwed the whole thing up. I'm so sorry. He assured me the juice is not measured. It's okay. And he'd bring me another one. I felt much better. I met and helped a woman that day who had double vision named Beverly. She was also crying and grateful for my kindness. I was able to go to my first in-person lecture where I learned the three main healing compo components, ketosis, the fat burn, autophagy, this is where the magic happens. It's process by which a cell breaks down and destroys old damaged or abnormal proteins and other substances. And third, hormesis, proof that there is such a thing as healthy stress. As for the weekly process, there are forms to fill out daily with water intake, weight, blood pressure, pulse by hand, heart rate, oxygen level, and a medicine sheet to mark off. Weekly blood draws, urine samples, and visits from my doctor. Then there are daily rounds four times per day with nurses, rounding doctors, and vitals checked also twice a day. Housekeeping will change your sheets by request only. They're wonderful. They brought me things like a heater, a fan. They changed my light bulb just simply because I wanted a different color. They fixed my safe, ordered me a white noisemaker, brought me an air purifier for my room, and got creative using a shower curtain as a drape when I didn't want my room so dark. But also, I didn't want people looking in. They were very accommodating and did everything they could to make sure that I was comfortable. I saw other people order mattress toppers and reclining chairs to their rooms. So far, my symptoms on juice are that my stomach is always growling. Day four, when I got here, I was 120.8 pounds, and now I'm down to 118.8. This day was my 54th birthday. I was down two pounds since I started. I feel great, like things are clearing out and making room for beautiful new cells to allow me to feel, move, and enjoy this gift of a body in this beautiful, amazing world. I received love from my family, from my sweet mate, from my FFOF family and friends. My friend Gina came to visit me, Janet sang happy birthday over a video and so on. I decorated my wall with cards and birthday love. My stomach is still growling. My blood work looked great. I was told I'll switch to water soon. I realized I need to focus on balance more, talk less, rest more and heal, yoga, stretching and breath work. Day six, fourth day on juice, March 4th. Another entry from my journal. Something I learned yesterday that finally connected with me is the real power of thought. Our outcome, experience, mood, and recovery all depend largely on attitude and thought. For example, if we sit quietly with our eyes closed and just imagine a beautiful orange in our hands, feel the texture, smell the skin and begin to peel it open. Notice the juice or any other sense of the orange. Begin to separate the sections and break one in half. Take time to look at it. Now, place it in your mouth. Gently begin to taste the amazing miracle of flavor and pure enjoyment while chewing. Chew and chew and chew until a complete cream before swallowing. Now open your eyes. What happened to you? Did the power of thought alone cause saliva production as if it was really happening? It did for me. So when we have thoughts we believe or say, our mind and body prepare for that experience to take place. It's where the magic of the miracle can happen. That's why I believe when people say affirmations, that's because there is power in belief. If you're angry, swear at another driver, or have poor self-talk, your body will begin to prepare for the fight or flight response or feel frustrated. The nervous system responds, the heart rate can elevate and the body will not be calm or keep you relaxed. And the immune system can become suppressed if it's an ongoing thought or feeling. 
Try to smile for no reason. Just smile. How does that feel? For me, it elevates my good feelings and energy levels. We're gifted with the miracle of the mind. It is powerful and learning to tap into that can help with healing and so much more. I was told to chew my juice as it stimulates digestion. It also opens the tiny fibers of the cell walls of a fragment of food. I believe it makes a difference in my healing. I asked many providers this question, what advice could you give me for getting the best results possible? Nurse Susanna said, rest, rest, rest. Nurse Gloria said, mentality. So many people have a negative mentality and they don't get the results they seek. Positive mentality is key. Interesting, since I just wrote about the power of the mind. Another person said, minimize your time in the courtyard because people are needy and they all wanna share their stories and it could suck out one's energy. Also, too much sun can take away energy. Dr. Weiss said, when you do have bursts of energy, not to do more, but to reserve it for the following day when you might not have energy. Day seven, fifth day of juice, March 5th, 115.2 pounds. I'm down almost three pounds and I have very low energy, less mucus and stuffiness in my sinuses. I still have some small fiber neuropathy sensations. Another journal entry. Today I was thinking about energy. Energy gets consumed in different ways. Example, watching TV or social media, talking or listening to people, all the way to physical energy due to exercise and so on. We want to reserve our energy here so the cells can do their job of healing our body. My concern is how do I make sure that other people that I love, like my friends and my family, don't suck the energy out of me? I need to figure out what is my limit and where are my boundaries? How can I keep my energy at some kind of even plane so that I have it to use the way that I want and need. Examples, feeling good or not feeling good, rejuvenating or healing, growing, and so on. Thinking of energy and how people need to talk about crisis, divorce, horrific fires, accidents, and so on. I wanna know how I can get friends and family to not have negative and crisis energy as a topic of conversation with me. What do monks talk about? Seventh-day Adventists too? What is the secret to keeping things positive and focused? When people share about these things or their health, it just goes back to energy. So their energy is going out into the universe and I hear it, I receive it, and maybe I don't want it. I don't wanna give it to people or receive it from people. Is there a way to set up a boundary so that I don't have that happen? I was thinking about energy as a savings account. So we all wake up in the morning and we have a certain amount of energy that we are to use for the day. Kind of like if you have a jar of money or a savings account, you save it up for when you're ready to spend it. Well, during our days, we use our energy and we have the ability to decide how we use our energy. We can use it on things that we want to for the day, but we have to be aware that people or problems that come up that we aren't prepared for can also suck out our energy. Day eight, sixth juice day, March 6th, 114.8 pounds. During the last 24 hours, I felt an elevated heart pumping. I was tired with low energy, thirsty, hungry, and slightly unstable. Neuropathy is low. It comes and goes. I rested and I worried as I learned of a family situation. The other day I was doing an up the wall yoga pose, one of many suggested poses that I got from Angela. I was on my bed and trying to remember where are my chakras. And on this day, I'm still thinking of energy and chakras. Kirby, my sweet mate, freely offered meditation and breath work as a class or a workshop while doing her own fast here and occasionally gave handouts. So I picked up one of her handouts and the cover said, how to breathe your way into relaxation and rejuvenation, the energy center cleanse. I turned the page and it also said, 
What is an energy center chakra? Wow. I'm being present and listening as I can hear or receive the answers or direction. Tomorrow, I start water only. Day nine, first day of water, seventh on liquids, March 7th. My first day here, Janet, her husband, Jesse and her husband all did water fasting at their homes to help support my journey. Today, as I finally start, Gina, Pam, Susanna, and Susanna's daughter will join me at their homes for the first 24 hours. The kind of water I will drink is distilled water. The water goes through reverse osmosis and then through a distillery machine and is bottled on site. I was told to sip slowly, walk slowly, rest, move my feet and hands in a rotation before getting up to help improve circulation and reduce the chance of lightheadedness. Not showering is recommended. No use of deodorant, creams, lotions, toothpaste, or having sex while fasting. How much water to drink? Four to six 12 ounce glasses are the minimum and 10 12 ounce glasses is the max. My doctor told me seven 12 ounce glasses each day would be perfect for me. I am experiencing heartbeat awareness which is the awareness of my heart beating so loudly that I can actually see the pulsing through my vision. I also have jaw tension. Dr. Dean said it's normal as the body is stressed and the mind is looking for food. Day 10, second day of water, eighth on liquids, March 8th. This was the hardest day for me. I couldn't sleep much and I had restless leg syndrome. When I woke, I remember I could feel my heart beat strongly. My body and my hands were shaky. I didn't want to talk or move much. I felt very tired. Slight headache for a short while. I felt the neuropathy yesterday, but not today. My jaw and teeth hurt at times. Today, they took my blood and had my glucose taken, which was normal. My massage was postponed by the doctor's orders due to my symptoms. It could cause dehydration from the loss of electrolytes. For headache relief, they gave me a little jar with cotton balls that they dripped peppermint essential oils on them to sniff and help with headaches. The brand that they used is called Majestic Pure Cosmeceuticals. Another journal entry. The fresh air makes me feel better. Funny, I'm also doing the kick sugar challenge through FFOF. When I asked or told myself, I am never going to eat sugar or flour again, I thought that sounded so final. I actually felt taken back. The inner dragon says everyone gets pleasure and joy while they eat it, and I want that pleasure. My rational brain says, you can't make me eat that. It's poison, and it will only hurt me. It's a trick. The pleasure I think I see in others when they eat sugar and flour is for a moment, and then the price will come in inflammation, disease, chronic illness, medical intervention, loss of quality of life, and so on. Because sugar and flour aren't real foods. They're a trap, a trick, and they're not for me ever again. Day 11, third on water, ninth on liquids, March 9th. Lots of random thoughts like, what makes rain noise? Is it rain touching other raindrops or rain hitting the surface? There was just so much rain. Journal entry. It takes a lot of discipline to not only drink water on a water fast, but to truly rest. Resting isn't sitting or lying down while doing something else. It's just resting. Fear seems to be bigger and scarier than the reality of it. Fear comes from the imagination which is to create and stretch truths. When facing fearful things, remember, it's part of our imagination. I was in fear of my stay at True North and flying on a plane alone to get here, not ever being healed and or getting worse, not fitting in and so on. My nails feel stronger today. I saw my doctor and we went over my labs. Everything that is out of balance is normal for me during fasting. All of my numbers before the fast weren't normal, such as the ferritin, which is our iron stores and others. He said my plan going forward is to fast to day 14 and then refeed for the last seven days before going home. 
I finally have a plan and that's exciting. Day 12, fourth on water, 10th on liquids, March 10th, weighing it at 110.6 pounds. Today was my wedding anniversary, an excerpt from my journal. Although we are apart in person, we are together within the heart. I had a facial and finally got that massage. I'm very tired and my heart awareness is still here and going strong. The facial consisted of soft music, steam on my face, a head and face massage and other wonderful things. It was very relaxing. Day 13, fifth on water, 11th on liquids, March 11th. My energy is better today. However, I felt sad and extra emotional and vulnerable. One of the nurses said, these feelings can come up and are normal. Day 14, sixth on water, 12th on liquid, March 12th. When I close my jaw, my teeth feel sticky. I have a slight headache. I napped and rested. I focused on the sensations of my body and my emotions while having my eyes closed. Slight neuropathy can be felt. While feeling it, I visualized my body removing the damaged old cells, the inflammation and healing. My doctor said sometimes the body remembers the pain and brings it back while it finishes and rids itself of the old cells. I noticed very purple veins in my hands and fingertips. Lots of people commenting on my glowing skin. Day 15, seventh on water, 13 on liquids, March 13th weighing in at 107.6 ounces. I had better energy today, but still heart awareness. I will be having a 24 hour urine test for detecting toxins, including mercury, arsenic, cobalt, and more. Later, I had low energy that returned and I napped. I'm noticing the neuropathy in new places like my calves. When I told my nurse, she said, if Dr. Goldhammer were here, he would be so excited to hear that. I was told that this is all wonderful as it can move before leaving. My fingernails look so shiny, like someone buffed them. People who care and love me often ask me, is it gone yet? Or, well, what will you do today? Journal entry. At first I felt sad, but now that I understand the process and how it takes time, I feel more equipped to answer these questions. What will I do today? Resting and nothing reflecting and healing. Why do we always have to be doing? Day 16, eighth on water, 14th on liquids, March 14th, 106.7 pounds, last day on water only. I started having sinus pain in my head when I laid down. They started adding sinus medication back into my rinses and steam to breathe. It seemed to be helping. They moved my room for my time during the last week. I disliked it very much. It was smaller, didn't have a closet, and it was right outside the kitchen, which was very loud. The other suite mates in this room never left their room. They never said hello. I felt so isolated. After spending the day there, I sent an email to Sandy, the scheduler, asking why I was moved since nobody was in my old room, that I was so happy being near Kirby and I disliked this room. She responded by telling me that someone was checking into my old room that evening. She also apologized and said she didn't realize that in the same building that I was in, the third bedroom actually is available. She offered it to me, the room next to Kirby. I immediately jumped at the opportunity. Sandy apologized again and told me I'd need to move right away if I wanted that room. I quickly called housekeeping for help with my luggage, but learned that they had already closed for the day. I also spoke with the medical team and asked for help moving, but they said they didn't have an extra staff to help and I was on my own. So I packed up my stuff and I moved back. I surprised Kirby. Guess who's back, I said. She noticed that I was winded and helped me move the rest of my things. I loved that room and my suite mates. Day 17, first refeed day, March 15th. In the morning, Augie from housekeeping noticed I was not in the room he put me in the day before. He asked me who helped me move. I told him I moved myself with some help from Kirby. He seemed pretty upset and said someone should have come to help me, that Dr. Goldhammer will be very upset when he tells him and lets him know because it's not safe to move your rooms while you're water fasting. 
The staff truly cares about guest safety. Thank you, Augie. Also, I'm now allowed to brush my teeth with toothpaste and shower, use lotion. The fast is over and now the refeeding begins. Journal entry. Bright and early, my first juice came, watermelon celery. It looked so intimidating. It smelled very strong and it was very cold. The smell was very, very strong salt. I finally tasted it. Wow, so much was happening in my mouth. I began to chew the juice. It had little bits in it. The celery and natural salt flavors were incredibly strong. I don't know how I was able to drink all of this. I found using the paper straw they provided helped me a lot. As the day progressed, I decided, even though I felt weak, still the sun was out, and so I went on my first short walk outside the health center. I went slowly, and I enjoyed simple flowers and trees that were very old and beautiful. I got to the Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery, a cemetery that's been around since the early 1800s. Lots of people go there. I saw a jogger, a girl and her dog, and a few other people just walking the grounds. It is 17 acres and more than 5,500 people rest there. I had to go up a small paved hill to get to the flatter surface. The ground was still very wet from all of the rain. I began to walk, but I didn't get very far at all. I felt my body saying, too much, too fast. So I returned to the front where I saw a bench and I rested a bit before heading back. I got my second juice, apple celery, and it tasted so incredibly tart, like sour apple. Again, I drank it through a straw. Later, I went into the courtyard. It was cold, but sunny. I hung out with several new friends. I enjoyed that, but again, my body wanted to rest inside. When I went inside, I was greeted with my third drink, watermelon celery again, but this time I really didn't want it and it took a while to drink. I had a good third left when the fourth and final juice came, the apple celery carrot. I have learned some people don't see results for six months to a year, and some need to do more than one fast to reach their goal and heal. This isn't a flip of a switch or an instant cure. It's a process, one that takes patience and time, as well as commitment to the lifestyle. Overall, my energy was improved. Day 18, second refeed, March 16th. My refeed is five phases. For me, each phase is a day and a half. Not everybody is on the same refeed program. And here I inserted a picture in case you were interested to see my phases. I get to have raw fruit and vegetables today after I finish my three juices. My favorite first food was cucumber, the wet centers and the seeds, cherry tomatoes, jicama, bell peppers tasting the water and turgor pressure released from the bell peppers. Lettuce leaves seem sharp on my tongue. I was also signed up to take Chef Mauricio's private paid cooking class. It was a party platter class and I got to help prepare the food. I wasn't deep enough into my refeed so I couldn't eat that food that day yet, but I did take some and I saved it for a different day. It was so fun. Day 19, third refeed, March 17th, Janet's birthday. This day, I had the most energy so far. I was able to help my family member with a plan for a current health issue, which made me feel relaxed. I went with Betty Lynn, another friend, and Kirby to a beautiful park and walked near a lake. Jim Taylor drove us and introduced us to a donkey and gave us each an apple to feed him. Day 20. Fourth refeed, March 18th. I ate butternut squash, steamed broccolettes, lettuce leaves with pomegranate and shallot dressing. Day 21, fifth refeed, March 19th. I worked on a schedule for myself with boundaries. An example of my schedule from my journal, meditate for 10 minutes or more, do breath work for 10 minutes or more, allow tasks for others to have an assigned window of time for the day exercise, including walking, yoga, stretching, weights, and biking. Always have some food prepared. When eating, just eat. Take breaks and refocus when busy. Be in charge of how I use my energy. Set a daily intention and pour it into the universe. 
This morning, I opened my app, Insight Timer, and took care of me first. I did 10 minutes of meditation while facing a window in my room with the view of a tree. I began setting daily intentions. Today, it was to be with a calm body, stable and clear mind, and have grace. I felt gratitude and wept for a moment. I thanked my body for not giving up on me, for talking to me and trying to express its needs, for its love and allowing me to still enjoy the freedom of a functional working body and mind. I had a pre-departure appointment with Atia to finalize the paperwork, make sure their courtesy billing to my insurance company was taken care of, turned in my name badge, find out when to check out time was and where I can go while waiting to be picked up and to place my order food for travel. My friend Gina visited in person. Although raining, we ate outside and enjoyed Chef Bravo's lunch together. She took me and another True North friend to a spice shop where we enjoyed samples and ordered some spices. After dropping the friend back at True North, Gina drove me about 15 minutes on the freeway to a cute little town nearby where we saw gigantic redwood trees, walked around and laughed a bit. It just felt so good to be out. She dropped me off and dinner for me is phase four, allowing me to add grains, nuts, and avocado to everything else that I'm already eating. Day 22, sixth refeed, March 20th, packing to go home, journal entry. Today I will get packed up and get ready for traveling home tomorrow afternoon. It's bittersweet. I made a lot of new friends, laughed and learned. I had a unique experience of water fasting and healing. I feel good. I feel improved. I feel confident. I feel nervous. I can say I'm leaving here with more tools and support than ever. I'm gifted. My intention for today is to walk through it with confidence, efficiency, and calmness. I am free from disease. I am free from pain. I am free again. Housekeeping did my laundry and I finished packing. I saw Dr. Sultana for my exit exam. He answered all my questions and concerns. We went over all the toxin labs. Everything came back with no traces. Later, I walked a bit in the cemetery as it was sunny out again. I was able to go further this time, read some of the headstones and enjoyed the sun. I filled out my questionnaire that Atia had given me. It goes directly to Dr. Goldhammer. I reviewed my meal order with Chef Mauricio, who also made a special dish, which was really nice. Day 23, 7th refeed, March 21st, my last day, my travel day. I had breakfast and hung out until 1 p.m. It was bittersweet. So many people I met, so many stories I heard, so many paths I crossed. People come here for all types of reasons, some to heal, some to lose weight, some to eat the food. I met blind people, people with high blood pressure, people with neurological issues, people here for weight loss, GI issues, long hauler COVID symptoms, cancers like lymphoma and leukemia. There were couples here, singles, family people without their families, and some even with their pets. Some people came from as far as the UK, India, Australia, Maryland, Maine, New York, Boston, Colorado, Arizona, Southern California, Santa Rosa, and more. It was a blessing. It was a learning experience, a challenge, an adventure. I confidently took my bags, my food, and myself, and I boarded my plane without any help. I lifted my luggage into the overhead bin and later picked my bag up at baggage claim. And like nothing, I pulled it off the baggage claim belt. I am home, greeted by my wonderful husband and our cute puppy and some beautiful flowers. After being home, I was so grateful I had food ready for me in the freezer and I was able to rest. I had a great experience, would highly recommend it, and I'd go again if given the opportunity. I would like to share a few notable classes, services, sayings that caught my attention and book suggestions that I have not yet read. Some of the services were chiropractic, Graston technique, craniosacral therapy, reflexology, facials, massages, stretching, and more. Some of the pictures you see here are actual classes happening where we learned cooking demonstrations, cooking techniques, 
Dr. Goldhammer sharing presentations, Chantel, who's the reflexologist, teaching us how we can help ourselves when we aren't with a reflexologist, and Kirby doing some of the seated chair meditation and breath work. This first saying came from my husband, Todd. Focus on the process, not the problem. Am I ready to let go of my diagnosis so I can begin to heal? And the body has to feel safe in order to heal says Chantel, the reflexologist. Don't push it away, be with it. Get out of the way of your healing. Water fasting is good for digestion, promotes the body's inherent ability to heal. While there, I watched the documentary From Food to Freedom by Nelson Campbell and heard the following quotes, which resonated with me. My worth isn't attached to what I do, example, a job, and take the leap. And everything you put in your mouth has a consequence. Regarding boundaries during my refeed, Dr. Weiss suggested setting times and boundaries. He shared this quote, the organs weep the tears the eyes refuse to shed by William Osler, MD. I began to read Bravo Express, Chef Bravo's cookbook, and learned Chef Bravo's story. On page three, the third line from the bottom, I connected with the following. So I surrendered to the idea that my life wasn't falling apart, it was falling together. What I appreciated most about this was his ability to find the positive during a time when he was struggling with divorce and trouble. Here are a few books that I have not read but were recommended to me. I also purchased some books while I was there and other products. When you buy merchandise at True North, there's a percentage that goes towards their research foundation. I want to thank all of the incredible staff at True North for being their amazing support, a love and friendship. Without them, this journey would not have been possible for me. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about my journey to True North and better health. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my experience at True North Health Center. If you have any questions, any curiosity, any comments, please feel free to share in the comment section below. I'd love to chat with you. Subscribe if you haven't, hit the notification bell, and please give this a thumbs up as it helps me help others. Thank you again for all your support. I wish you nothing but the best in greens. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.